Hi everyone, talk you through the uh, Le Chatelier lab. Now remember, this one isn't due until the final Sunday of spring break, so you've got plenty of time to do this, or, although I would uh, kind of suggest looking at it before Thursday because I don't know if you noticed, but I just posted uh, that there will be an optional office hour on Thursday of spring break. I'll be there at the normal time on Thursday at 9.30, so feel free to stop by if you've got any questions. So, you know, if you've got any questions about this lab, probably uh, obviously look at it before Thursday of spring break. Now, this one's kind of interesting because this is something you actually have some familiarity with, okay? If you remember back in Chemistry 100, okay, you did a few acid-base titrations, okay? And in each case, and this is a very terrible drawing, <laughs> you had your burette, and the burette always had some NaOH in it, right? And down here was typically some HCl, oh, there we go, some HCl or some other acid, yeah? And you put phenolphthalein, which is a weak acid, weak base equilibrium, which we'll get to in a couple of packets time, okay? So you put some phenolphthalein in there, okay? And when it's in acid, yeah, if you remember, it's colorless. Now we use this particular indicator, phenolphthalein, a lot because it's from colorless in acid conditions, okay, to pink or purple in basic conditions, okay? And that's how we're able to tell the end point, okay? So it goes from colorless to purple with the addition of sodium hydroxide. Now what's actually happening in the container is this, okay? So in here, H plus from the acid hooks up with OH minus from the base to make water, okay? So when the pH essentially goes neutral, it changes color because all the H plus has been removed, okay? Now that comes down to an equilibrium, okay? So there's obviously a relationship between H plus somewhere, the colorless form and the purple form, okay? So keep that in mind as we go through, okay? Just keep in mind that, hey, <laughs> when there's lots of free H plus, it's colorless. When the H plus has been removed, it's purple, and as we'll go through the, the math here in, in the lab, you'll see why, okay? So, you know, have a flashback to, you know, seeing this before. Okay, so let's look at it. So, and it kind of talks about it there, okay? So, there's the equilibrium, all right? So, clear is an equilibrium with purple, and they've put plus H plus there, okay? So, let's think about that for a second, okay? So. Remember? Now remember, this is a Chatelier thing, so it's often backwards from the way you think, right? Okay? So when there's lots of H+, plus, it's colorless, right? And it's purple when there's no H+. Plus. Okay? So, <clears throat> does that make any sense? Okay? Does that make any sense? Let's look at it. Here it is, okay? So, the clear material in equilibrium with the purple material and H plus, okay? The reverse reaction, <laughs> if you write it the other way around, purple plus H plus is in equilibrium with clear, okay? Now think about that for a second. Okay, now when we're adding OH minus, right? When we're adding OH minus from the burette, okay, what actually happens? Well, if you remember that first page, H plus, which is sitting in the flask, plus OH minus goes to H2O, right? So that's in the flask, right? That's an equilibrium, if you like, right? Okay, in the flask, right? Okay, as acidic conditions. Now, as we put OH minus in there, okay, H plus is removed. If H plus is removed, if H plus is removed, what way does the equilibrium go? It goes that way. So it's kind of counterproductive to start with, right? So if we think about it, at the beginning of that titration, the equilibrium lies all the way to the right, doesn't it, right? Okay. Then as we remove H plus by adding H plus, sorry, as we, sorry, as we remove H plus by adding OH minus from the burette, this removes, so it responds by replacing it essentially. Okay, so it turns purple, okay, it turns purple. And that's exactly how it works. Now, if you think about it, you can play with this equilibrium by changing either adding H plus or OH minus, okay? So, well, let's just go back and show you that, right? So let's go with clears and equilibrium with purple. 
plus h plus, right? If we, remember, there's two conditions, right? So we add OH minus, okay? That means that's going to turn that into water, right? Okay, so remove H plus. So that's an acid-base thing, right? So if you add OH to a equilibrium with H plus in it, the H plus will react to make water. It'll be removed, right? So when we add OH minus, the H plus is removed. It moves to the right. Remember, Chatelier replaces losses, right? So if I remove H plus, it makes more H plus, okay? So eventually you'll turn all the clear in the purple, and it will turn purple, you know, when you've reached the equivalent point of the titration, when you've added just the amount, right amount of OH minus. Okay, again, more details on the position of that equilibrium and what's called Ka and Kb, which is the equilibrium constants for acids and bases in later packets, but just get the concept in terms of Chatelier, right? Next one, two, if you add, maybe you can predict this, if you add H plus, what's going to happen? Remember, this is an acid base indicator, right? So if I actually add H plus, so I'll make my arrow go the other way, right? If I add H plus, the equilibrium is now out of balance, yeah? There's too many products. So what's it going to do? It's going to remove. It's going to go to the left. I put right. Okay. So. If we add H+, plus, it's going to want to remove it, it'll make the clear stuff. If we add OH-, minus, it'll remove H+, plus. it'll make the purple stuff, okay? So the position of the equilibrium can be judged by the color of the solution. You would expect in your experiment, when you add OH, you remove H+, plus, it turns more clear. When you add H+, plus, sorry, let's go. <laughs> I did, didn't I? I did it. I did the mistake that I don't want you to make. Okay, let's go from the top. So when I add OH minus, right, I remove H plus. Yeah, getting confused by my arrow, right? If I remove, it moves to the right. It goes more purple. So if I add OH minus, it goes purple. And that's what we see when we do an acid base titration. Okay. If we go the other way, if I add H plus, it's going to move to the left. It's going to become more clear. So the depth of color will change based on the position of the equilibrium. more H plus present at equilibrium, the more to the right it is, the less H plus present at equilibrium, the more clear it is. Now, as you may remember, this is kind of important, okay? When we look at, and we didn't actually do this too much in Chemistry 101, it's kind of safe for 102, but I gave you the basic kind of bare bones of it, okay? H plus concentration, right? This should do with acidity, isn't it, right? And you measure acidity with pH. So it turns out that the H plus ion, okay, so the pH equals the minus log in base 10 of the H plus ion concentration, okay? Interesting, right? So if you like, P is just a function, and we'll see it later, which says take the log in base 10 and put a minus sign in front of it, right? So if I, for example, took the, you know, if I had 10 to the minus 3, so if I had an H plus concentration of 10 to the minus 3, take the log, so that would be 3, change the sign, pH equals 3, okay? Now remember, it's a minus, right? So if you think about it, the smaller the pH, the larger the number. So if I had 10 to the minus 1, which is three, you know, three orders of magnitude stronger concentration, pH is, can you get it? 1, okay? So if you ever wonder why, why a lower pH is stronger, it's because it's the minus log of the power, okay? So that's the equation for pH, yeah, okay? So the lower the pH, the more H plus. When you get to seven, this is a kind of a, a misconception people have, right? People think, because we'll get to this in later packets, right? The amount of H plus and OH in solution is like a yin and a yang thing. When there's a identical numbers of H plus and OH minus, that's neutral. The actual concentration is 10 to the minus seven, right? for both of them, okay? But we only concentrate on the H+. So when a solution is pH 7, which is neutral, it has a concentration of 10 to the minus 7 H+, and also a 10 to the minus 7 concentration of OH-. That ratio switches as things become more acidic or basic, okay? And if you like, the sum of the powers always adds to 14, right? So if I'm at pH, well, if I'm down here at minus 3, that one's minus 11, right? That's obviously quite a strong acid because it's pH 3, right? Okay. If I go the other way, 
10 to the minus 10, that's pH 10, right? That's, that's basic, and that would be 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter OH minus. Okay, so we're getting to that yin and yang thing later. All you need to know for now is, hey, pH 7 is neutral. The concentration of H plus and OH minus is both 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. As the relative ratio changes, a higher concentration is a lower number to a negative power, right? So 10 to the minus 3 is pH 3, right? Okay, get that. All right, so we see this. Now, when you want to kind of convert the other way, you can just do a little bit of math here. So the pH is the minus log of the concentration, right? Okay, if I go the other way, do a little bit of math, right? pH equals minus log of H plus ion concentration. So minus pH equals log H plus. Now remember we did the thing with the natural logs and the E's? Base 10, right? 10. So the H plus ion concentration, this is kind of a nice equation we use a lot later, is minus pH. And that's, you know, that's what they talk about in here. Okay, so that's where that comes from. All right, so it's a real simple kind of review of what we're going to do. And then if you think about it, well, <clears throat> they talk about it here. If I go back over here, K equals products, which is purple, H plus over clear. Okay, and that's essentially what they're saying here for K, products over reactants, okay? You can put it in terms of, you know, a fraction, and they did a little bit of math there, okay? So, you know, they put it in terms of just the purple, so, you know, 100 minus 20 is 80, that kind of thing. So you can determine it in terms of just one, the amount of purple, and that's what they've done there, okay? So on the whole, pretty, you know, this is the first time I've actually seen this lab, okay? So if we look here, you're going to make a table, different conditions of concentration of NaOH, remember which way that will shift the equilibrium, HCl, that will shift the equilibrium, and then heat, right? So remember, if it's an exothermic reaction, it moves to the left. If it's an endo, it turns to the right. Okay, so you might want to check the notes for that. Okay, so they kind of, you know, ask you to kind of just fill in these pH and, you know, amount of purple, essentially, right? Okay, so you should see obviously a correlation if, you, if you've got products, if we go back to our equilibrium here. <clears throat> there it is. If you've got more products, you would expect to see a deeper amount of purple and lower pH because more H plus means lower pH, right? Okay, and vice versa, if there's a lot of NaOH, if you like, it's going to be more clear, isn't it? Okay, all right. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, again, office hour Thursday in midterm. Feel free to come by if you've got questions about this lab at that time. Okay, otherwise we'll stop there. See you guys next time.